What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G, and we're gonna go over this quiz that I posted for IT fundamentals for sections 1.1 through 1.2. For those of you who are in the student and scholar membership program, so for the IT fundamentals quiz that I posted the link to, gave you guys like an entire week to go through it. It's just a basic quiz. I think the quiz was like 20 something minutes long, or maybe 30 minutes long. I can't exactly remember how many questions were on it. And it was a time quiz. And the reason why I'm giving you quizzes like this is because when you guys go sit down and take the actual certification exam, you're going to be taking a timed exam. And so a lot of these questions, you're going to have to get comfortable with the idea that you're going to have about one minute or so to answer the questions. That's how these things operate. IT fundamentals quiz um, sections 1.1 through 1.2. And this is what I told you guys to go through. So you're supposed to go through the videos for IT fundamentals where we talked about notational systems and then you're supposed to learn uh, watch the video decimal to binary to hexadecimal conversions and then you also had the video where we were talking about data types that was what you were supposed to have gone through so now we're going to go through this quiz real quick and hopefully uh you guys that did participate in the quiz you did well and uh you know if you didn't do well because a matter of fact i want to say that the class average matter of fact let me check that before we kick this off so the class average for everybody who took this test came out to be a 61 percent and so you need at least a 72 percent i believe to pass this uh quiz that i set up so anyways you're supposed to study all this information right here notational systems decimal to binary to hexadecimal conversions and data types all right so let's get into the quiz all right so the first question on that quiz was which of the following characters is not in the standard ascii or the ascii character set would it be the letter z would it be the explanation point would it be the sent symbol or would it be the dollar sign symbol so which of the following characters is not in the ascii character set those of you who don't know what ascii stands for it stands for american standard code for information interchange so the correct answer to this was it would be the sent sign and the reason why it is the sent sign is because the sent sign is not a standard character that you can see on a keyboard the rest of these characters z explanation point and the dollar sign these are all standard characters that you can hit you just hit the key once so you got to use a combination of the shift key or something like that this character the sent symbol is a special character that requires you to hit either or in most cases a combination of multiple keys to get to so it's not just something that's standard Standard that is readily accessible. The ASCII, they basically cover all the readily accessible characters. Next question. Decimal 15. This is equal to which of the following in binary? Would this be 01, 1101? 1001 or would it be 1111 so decimal 15 so this is uh if you guys had watched the binary to decimal the hexadecimal conversions video this is where this information came from and the correct answer would be this would be 1111 why because these are all binary numbers right here and so when you're trying to do the conversion process to figure out what its decimal equivalent would be well basically this means that these bits are turned on and basically what you're looking at is the last four numbers in an octet this is known as a nibble so normally an octet would be eight digits eight binary digits so just imagine there are four zeros in place of these uh four ones but those four zeros are turned off and these last four ones are turned on when you convert these binary digits into their decimal equivalent well the first one right here this will be equal to the number one the second one will be equal to the number two the third will be four and the fourth will be the number eight you just and being that they're all turned on you just simply add the numbers up and that will get you the decimal decimal equivalent of the number 15. So 15 written in binary is four ones that are turned on. One, 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 one. You are attempting to enter the phrase wide world of sports into a data entry field that can only accept 12 characters. Which of the following is what you will see when you enter this text? Will it be wide world O? Will it be LD of sports? Will it be wide sports? Or would it be DE world of? So you're trying to enter the phrase wide world of sports into a data entry field that only accepts 12 
12 characters. So which of the following is going to be true? The correct answer would be wide world O. Why is that? Because these are the 12 characters. You're starting with W. So you got one, two, three, four, five. You got to count the space. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Got to count the space and 12. These characters right here to include the two spaces would make up for the first 12 characters that are only going to be accepted into this data entry field. Now, the next quiz, I plan on dropping the next quiz. And like I say, once again, you're going to have about a whole week to go through through it. So just expect around this time, Sunday, five o'clock next week, we will go over the next IT fundamentals quiz for those of you who are part of the student and scholar membership. Now, for those of you who are part of the scholar membership, well, you're going to get access to the A plus, the network plus and the security plus quizzes. And also I'm working on creating some labs for you all to do that. You'll log on to the computer through this, you know, looking at me through here, just the same way. And I'm going to walk through and show you how to do these labs, how to set them up and you can do them on your own computer at your own leisure so you can learn various things pertaining to routing and switching or other various components pertaining to computers you know stuff to directly help you pass these tests and also stuff you could possibly list on your resume saying that hey you know how to do this that's going to be for those y'all who are part of the scholar membership and if you're not a part of the scholar membership i highly encourage you to consider it because i plan on teaching you way more stuff to help get you thoroughly prepared to pass these certifications and you can add stuff to your resume all right all right, we're going to go over this A plus hardware quiz that I posted last week. For those of you of the scholar membership level, I appreciate you all and your support for this channel. I'm also glad that you all are taking this serious and you want to, you know, do whatever it is you got to do to uh, get certified so you can go out there and get these careers on and popping in IT and cybersecurity. So we're going to go over this quiz. Now, you guys know I open these quizzes up to everybody, but I reserve the actual reviews for those of you who are on the scholar level and also for those of you on the scholar level i plan on showing you guys some labs so basically i want to do like a weekly lab where i show you guys how to you know do some things pertaining to programming routers and switches and some other pc related stuff stuff that you can actually put on your resume and say hey you know how to do this because you know i want you guys to take this uh education very seriously and i'm pretty sure you guys are considering you all have chosen to sign up for the scholar membership level so anyways out of everybody who took this test we got a class average of 65%. Now for the actual test, I want to say that you need at least a 75 to pass. So if you got a 75 and you passed it, shout out to you. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and do this review. And this quiz was for the A plus hardware and all those videos are available in my playlist. And yes, this is for the 220 1001 exam, but also understand that this same information can be applicable to the new version of the A plus the 1101 and the 1102 exam, which I will have videos coming coming out in the near future for that as well. So anyway, sections 1.1 and 1.3, they cover laptop hardware and components, talked about laptop displays and laptop features. That was the sections 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. So let's get into the quiz. So the first question is, which of the following is a type of internal data storage device that is found in laptops? Would it be a flash drive, USB, volatile, or a magnetic disk? So which of the following following is a type of internal data storage device that you can find in a laptop and you would find a magnetic disk is what you would find inside of a laptop. Flash drives are not inside of laptops. USBs, we all know what a USB is. That's basically just a connector that you can plug an external device to the computer. And then volatile, that simply means that something has a potential to disappear as it directly relates to computer programming and things of that nature. But magnetic disk would be the correct answer. Next question. True or false? Laptops use an alternating current jack to charge their battery. So would this be true or would this be false? The correct answer is this would be false. They use a DC jack. So basically the DC jack, you got a laptop, you got your power brick that plugs into the wall, and you got that little piece that comes from the power brick that actually plugs directly into your laptop to provide it power. That is called the DC jack. It's taking AC electricity out 
out of the wall, converting it into DC in the power brick, and then sending that power to the DC jack to be fed directly into your laptop. So the correct answer to this question would be false. What is ESD? That stand for Employee Service Directory, Electrostatic Discharge, Electromagnetic Static Drive, or Electronic Stationary Devices. So what is ESD? Correct answer would be Electrostatic Discharge. So this is basically just static electricity. So electrostatic discharge or static electricity can be very hazardous to a computer. This is why when you're opening up the inside of a computer, you have to discharge your body of static electricity. And there are various ways you can do that. You can touch a piece of metal that's touching the ground. That'll discharge you. Or you could just put on an ESD wrist strap, just basically something that hooks up to your wrist. And there's a metal contact that's touching your skin. And then that metal contact is connected to a wire, which is then connected to another piece of metal that is grounded. So basically that the electricity can flow from your body safely into the ground and not into the computer that you're working on. All right. So that was our quiz, ladies and gentlemen, on A plus hardware, where we talked about laptop hardware and components, displays and laptop features for this first quiz. And once again, I appreciate all y'all who are on the scholar membership level. Now, next quiz for next week, we're going to be talking about A plus software stuff. So I will post the link to that in the community tab to let you all get access to the quiz. And like I say, once again, access to the quiz is for everybody who signed up for the student and scholar membership. But those of you who get the reviews for the A plus network plus and security plus and the IT fundamentals, those are that's reserved for y'all on the scholar membership levels. Those on the student membership levels, they only get access to the IT fundamentals quiz reviews. And also for those of you in the scholar membership levels, I'm going to be introducing weekly labs to teach you guys various concepts pertaining to uh, routers and switches and computer networking and computer programming and all that stuff. So that, you know, to give you guys some skills, additional skills and things you could possibly put on your resume in the future saying that you know how to do this, that, and the third, in addition to uh, getting your certification. In IT, experience is king. Experience followed by certification certifications and followed by some type of formal education or whatever the case may be, but you still need that experience. So that's what we're going to be doing at the scholar level. It's not just going to be straight quizzes and answers, but I'm going to show you guys how to do certain things as well. That is directly related to the lessons that we'll be reviewing that week.